Hello and welcome to this month's drawing tutorial. This is our subject matter for this month, so we're going to have a couple of challenges. A perspective challenge, drawing of full figure baby, and then some high detail. So the reference material will be downloadable and here we go. Start by cropping that in. So here I've made a paper frame and I've taped it to the picture on the back. Then on the paper frame I came up with increments from 1 to 7 across the top and from A to G across the sides. Those measurements correspond to a larger but similarly proportioned rectangle on my drawing paper. So now I use those outer grid points and I find the outermost points of the largest shapes. So I'm going to start with the head and the shape of the body. If I line up the side of the ruler here, I see that top of the head is going to be right under the A point the bottom of the chin almost perfectly on the D point. The front of the head is just a little bit over the four point and this side of the head over here and that is halfway between the edge and the one. So let's take those to our drawing paper. Halfway between the edge and the one is here. A little bit under the A is here so I have a dot that I can put down right there. The top of the head right over the two then the side of the head, remember that was a little bit over the four, and the bottom of the head was right on D. So then, let me kind of sketch those in. Then I'm going to use my straight edge and extend this line of angle to see where it intersects the outer edge of the graph. So right at the one and under the A here, that gives me a line about here. And you can just do that same process wherever you have a line especially a diagonal line, just extend it out, see where it bisects the graph, and get those diagonals in place right away. Then once you have those large shapes in place, you need to go back and start to clean them up a little bit better. Okay, so this is just the tedious process of really slowly going around and double checking those shapes, checking them against the grid, and then checking them against each other, and making sure that you wind up with a picture that looks like the reference. So this is just going to take a while. Let me get it pushed up just a little bit and I'll come back to you to show you how to push forward. Now I've pushed forward and cleaned up these lines some. Now the other thing is I need to put these piano keys in and they need to be mechanically straight and they need to be in perfect perspective. So what I do is I use my handy dandy ruler here and you can see that the bottom of the keys go straight through the upper edge, which was just really lucky. So this corner happens to be the vanishing point. If I keep this corner where it is and I just move my ruler up, you can see that everything lines up perfectly going through this vanishing point. The bottom of the black keys, the top of the black keys, the top of the piano. But I'm doing two point perspective because each of these keys is like a little box. So now I need to find the vanishing point on this other side. And since these keys look almost parallel, that vanishing point is going to be way off my page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that same trick where I extend my line and see where it bisects the graph. So here, I'll start with um, the key next to the one that he's holding down because that will be easy to find. Then extend that line to see where it bisects the graph. So it's almost halfway between D and E on the right side and it's a little bit above F on the left side. That would make that line right here. And I'm going to put down at least two keys to find the vanishing point for the rest. So now, see if I extend this line, extending it, and I find a point of convergence clear over here. I drew those lines off the page onto another sheet of paper, and if I just keep this perfectly still, I should now be able to find the rest of my keys using this vanishing point. But I'm going to do that off camera because it takes a lot of time, and then I'll come back to you and we'll start to lay in the tone with a charcoal pencil and finish the rest of the piece from there. All right, now I am satisfied that the initial line drawing is correct. So I'm going to push forward and I'm going to do the rest of the drawing in charcoal. Get a clean piece of paper to rest your arm on. Then I'm going to take this charcoal pencil and I'm going to just strengthen up some of these exterior lines. 
The charcoal doesn't stick to graphite, so I'm going to have to erase and redraw. Then, after all of that is done, I need to lay down an initial pass of tone. So there's skin tone, and then there's the shadow shapes on top of the skin tone. Start with the skin tone. So I'm going to put some tone over the hair and the skin using the pencil on the side, just trying to keep my pressure really light and even, working from the top down, and I'm going to fill it all in. Then, after I put that tone down, I need to blend it. The first pass of tone, I always blend with a chamois cloth. I wrap it around my finger, and I use little circle strokes to blend that tone nice and smooth. The chamois cloth blends it very smooth, but it also picks up a lot of tone. So step two is to go over the top of these lines and just bring out the ones that need to be a little bit darker. So keep your line work to a minimum. I'm just clarifying where these different features are supposed to be. Then you can darken up the areas on the face that need a extra push. So you can either do that with a brush or you can do that with your pencil. If you choose to use a brush, just get something that's soft, completely clean, and completely dry, and then I'm going to dip it right in the charcoal that I have left over on my sandpaper from uh, sharpening that pencil, and I'm going to put that tone down by painting it in place. It goes down nice and smoothly, it fills in as darkly as you want it to. The only downside is it's hard to keep your tone even. Then, get your pencil nice and sharp again, and you can start to work on the details. You get everything worked up to one level of completion, then you bump it all up to the next level. Then, after you have some lines down, you want to blend those out and make them less apparent. But once you have a line put down, then you're going to use that stomp using little circle strokes and blend out one side of the line. I'm going to go off camera now and do a little bit more work on the, just the face, and then I'm going to come back and I'll show you how to work on the hair. Okay, I've rendered the shading on the face a little bit more now, so let's dive into that hair. Get a charcoal pencil, it can be the same softness that you use for the face, and the first thing you're going to do is just sketch the shapes of the clumps of hair. So get those shapes down first. Make sure that they're ending the right place on the head, and as you sketch them in, follow the direction of the hair as long as the growth. So what I mean by that is take, start your pencil line where the hair would actually be growing from the crown of the head and follow it all the way down. Focus next on getting the shapes of the shadows down. Wherever the hair is really dark, press down hard and get those clumps down. Then you can connect those dark shapes with some lighter strokes like this and that will help it read like actual hairs. Also, before you get everything too dark, get your kneaded eraser out and pluck out some highlights where you see the light striking the hair. So then you just preserve the highlights that you've already pulled out by working around them as you add more tone. And then two, get out that stomp again and you can blend the tips and help vary up the texture of the hair a little more. And once you've blended some areas like this, go back with your pencil and pull out some more specific tiny little lines. Okay? So let me take this off camera, finish up the hair, come back to you, and we'll push forward into the fingers and the clothing. Okay, the hair is done now, so let's push down into the clothing and the arms. So let's look at the reference material again. And that clothing is really light, so I'm going to keep that in mind and put down a light coat of charcoal. I'm going to work from the top to the bottom just the exact same way that I did with the skin. Once that's done, get your chamois cloth, Wrap that around your finger at a clean or cleanish spot. Circle stroke to blend it all out. Then you know what's coming next, I bet. I'm gonna protect the rest of this sheet so I don't get too much smearing. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm going to bring out the fold lines and those important lines that tell me where things are going on. Draw the shape of the sleeve and then draw the folds on top. Okay, you're giving yourself a map first, and then you're making those details. Now it's time for the stomp. And here I see that this sleeve by and large is just a jot darker than the underside of this 
outfit here. So I'm going to use a large stomp and I'm going to put over a little bit darker tone there first. I can do that by adding a little bit more with the pencil like this and anywhere else that it looks a little darker. And then go in with that big stomp and circle stroke right over the top of all of it and use a nice light, 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 light touch especially at the outer edge. Clean it up and accent those lines again. Okay, so this time as I put in those lines, I can still see where I accented them before, so I can focus more on adding a little bit more tone to the folds. Then also I'm going to add just a little bit more detail to these hands, bringing those lines back out that divide the fingers, and I'm using a nice soft touch just make sure that this finger comes down like it's pressing the key down. So let me just work on these folds in the fabric and bring the clothing up to a higher level of realism. I'll do that off camera to save you some time. Then I'll come back and we'll work on that piano. Okay, this is the clothes. I added some dinosaurs and some detail down here. But other than that, it's just exactly what we went over. So now let's finish this out with the piano and the piano bench. So whenever you have something that has both brights and darks, do the brights first. Get those finished, and then do the darks on top. When you blend the darks, you'll be done. Get a dirty stomp and add a line of tone to the bottom of the keys here, and then also to the top of those ivory keys. The underside of the keys are just a little bit darker because they're at a different angle. Then I'm going to take a ruler and my sharp pencil and just start at the top and then just re-darken just like this. Okay, so I'm going to do that same work up here and then I'm also going to add tone to the wood and to the black keys. So for the wood, I want the line right here to be really precise and so I can tape it because I'm not going to do any blending back here. There. Now I can work around and just fill this tone in same way that I did with the flesh tone and the clothing. And then blend with a chamois cloth. The circle strokes right up to the tape. So that's a good base tone. Now I can go in in the darker areas and add some details and some line work. Line up that vanishing point again and redraw the lines that you need to redraw with the straight edge. Then I'm going to add some detail like the scroll work and the purling and so on, I make it darker. And then to keep those edges precise, I'm going to go in with a stomp or tortillon, blend that tone smooth. To add tone to those black keys, outline the lines first and then use little circle strokes, working down from that straight edge protected line. And I'm also going to add some tone to the piano bench. Let's protect the edges of that piano bench. Then add the base tone first. I'm going to carefully work around the edge of the clothes first. And then I can be a little faster as I fill in the tone up to the clothes. Fill that in. I'm not going to risk smearing his clothes, so I'm going to leave the edge unblended and do that part with my stomp. And once that's blended, examine your drying and there's some wood grain that comes this way. Let's draw some lines and then I'm going to use my kneaded eraser to pluck out a few little white lines between the dark and some short little ones like this. Then go around those highlights with your charcoal pencil and add some more detail doing this. So I'll do all the rest of this work off camera and then I'll come back and show you how it turned out. And there we have a little pianist. Here's the top and the bottom. So that concludes this month's drawing tutorial. We've learned some things about adding um, elements in perspective. So I hope that you've taken away some things that you can use in your own studio. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you join me next month for another drawing tutorial.